everyone, welcome back to the Film Feast. My name is Sam Donchus. I'm your host, and I've seen more films by Scott Waugh than I have by Akira Kurosawa. And now that I have completely dashed my film credibility in a single sentence, let's get right down to it. This episode of the Film Feast is about a still growing franchise, still very much so in its infancy. You may have heard about it. It's still trying to find a more robust fan base, but it's out there, and a lot of people do enjoy it. I'm talking about Pacific Rim. More specifically, I'm gonna be talking about Pacific Rim's future. But before I get into that, I do need to mention that this is Ketchup Edition of the Film Feast, and I am still a few months behind on my news. This story came out in late June. My God, it's September, and I'm still talking about news from June! So yeah, you've probably heard this news already. I get it, but this is my vlog, and I wanna talk about it. And plus, you can comment in the, 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 the thing, and we can talk about it together. That's more fun anyway, right? But anyway, Legendary Pictures, the production company behind Pacific Rim, released a video of Guillermo del Toro, the director of the first film, as well as a bunch of other really great movies, saying, hey, Pacific Rim 2 is happening, along with a bunch of other Pacific Rim-related stuff. But I'll get to that in a second. The most important bit of news here is that Pacific Rim 2 is coming out on April 7th, 2017. Yes. Admittedly, I give that yes with a little bit of hesitation because while I do appreciate Pacific Rim as a sci-fi action movie, it was one of my most hyped movies of 2013. I just don't love it. I, I like it a bit and I, I even own it on Blu-ray, but it's just not a movie that I can really sink my teeth into time and time again. Honestly, I think most of my apprehension comes from the very first time I saw the movie and I really wasn't expecting what I got. But honestly, I took that into the second viewing and got a kick out of it because I knew what I was going in for. And then on the third and fourth viewing, the stuff I didn't like the first time with the movie really kind of came back and reared its head and just said, whoa, wait, no, these elements of the movie really are fairly weak. Mostly Charlie Hunnam's acting. And I feel bad saying that because it, I feel like if they had just let him keep his British accent, it would have worked out a lot better. But instead he has this forced American accent and take into consideration. I haven't seen Sons of Anarchy. I don't know how he does on that show, but in Pacific Rim, it just sounds so like if a cement wall were to act. It's like he has all the makings of a good action star, but then they just tack on that American accent and it does not work. And then there's the very complex act of world building in Pacific Rim, and it, it just kind of flies by in the first movie. You know, we get a, a few bits of world building details from the characters, but other than that, it's too much for one movie. Now, if your hype was as crazy as mine, you would have gone to your local bookstore, sought out the Pacific Rim prequel novel Year Zero, and kind of beefed up on the lore of Pacific Rim, because the, the prequel novel actually has some good stuff in it, good story details to really build the world that they couldn't have achieved in a single movie. And the best part is, is that you can still go out and find it. It's a very, very small graphic novel, very easy read, and it's actually got some pretty good stories in it, considering it's from one of the screenwriters of Pacific Rim, Travis Beecham. Beecham will be returning to write the script for Pacific Rim 2 with Guillermo del Toro, along with Zach Penn. And Zach Penn is a newcomer to that team, but he is not a new screenwriter by any stretch of the imagination, having worked on some of the most prolific comic book movies of the 2000s. Admittedly, the fact that Zack Penn is joining that team is a little bit worrisome because while he did write the story for X2 X-Men United, he wrote the screenplay for X-Men The Last Stand. But even that is not enough to give me a good quality gauge on how good or bad Zack Penn might be in this case. If he's just writing the story structure for Pacific Rim 2, it could be pretty good. But going back to the Pacific Rim prequel graphic novel Year Zero, Guillermo del Toro also announced plans to continue that graphic novel. And if that wasn't enough for one video, Guillermo del Toro also announced plans to develop a Pacific Rim animated series. Very few details have been given about that, other than the fact that it'll be developed through 2017. But still, I really like the idea of an animated Pacific Rim series. I mean, if the 19 1998 Godzilla shit show could get an animated series, why not Pacific Rim? The sequel, the comic series, the animated series, it's all thanks to one big thing. The international box office. The first Pacific Rim's domestic take was just barely over a hundred million dollars, which is not very good, especially for a blockbuster. But the foreign earnings proved to be 75% of the total worldwide gross. And that was enough to convince Legendary Pictures to move the Pacific Rim sequel into the next phase of development. Now, does that mean that Warner Brothers or Universal or whoever's going to distribute it will actually want it? 
that's still to be determined, but I have faith. So many movies get sequels that they don't necessarily deserve, but I think the Pacific Rim is one of those rare franchises that does deserve a sequel. Despite the stunted dialogue, despite the not-so-good acting in places, and despite the fact that they tried to fit a shit ton of information into a two-hour and ten-minute movie, Pacific Rim has stuck with me. It's a really good live-action adaptation of a mecha anime mixed with a giant monster movie. Plus, it perfectly harkens back to the day when I was a kid and I had the robot toy and the monster toy and I would just mash them together. So if the sequel can retain that mixture of childlike playtime carnage and anime action beats with a little bit better dialogue and acting and room to breathe for story details, I'll be sold. And between the new comic series and the new animated series, it sounds like the powers that be are finally allowing Guillermo del Toro and crew to flesh out the story in a way and sell it to brand new audiences, as well as people who may have not enjoyed Pacific Rim the first time around, sell it to them in a whole new way and get them to come back to the theater. In the meantime, Guillermo del Toro will be fine tuning his new film, Crimson Peak, which will be coming out in October of 2015. Very excited about that one. So that's it for this episode of The Film Feast. Go in the comment section, talk about the Pacific Rim sequel and the animated series and what you hope to see from these things, and join me on the next episode where I will be talking about Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. Thank you for watching. Shane Black will be writing and directing a Predator sequel. Originally, the story was spun as a Predator reboot, which would mean it wasn't tied down to the original series or the Alien vs. Predator series or even the 2010 Robert Rodriguez produced Predators. No, this film will be a sequel. What is it a sequel to? I'm not exactly sure. Does it matter? Was Predators a reboot? I don't know. I don't know much about the Predator series. Please don't throw rocks at me.